Welcome back to the channel, everybody. I am Mick Alphanim. Once again, major things going on. Let's get right into this article from the Cryptopolitan.com. And it it's titled, I'm telling you, we got some good motion going. It says Reserve Bank of New Zealand collaborates with a ripple on CBDCs using XRP Ledger. <laughs> money, 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 money. Listen, I, <laughs> the setup is beautiful. Everything's coming together little by little, but it's coming together. So now let's read this little tidbit here, okay? It says, the Reserve Bank of New Zealand and Ripple, a prominent player in the cryptocurrency industry, have discussed the potential creation of central bank digital currencies utilizing the XRP ledger. This move reflects the Reserve Bank's commitment to integrating digital innovation into the nation's financial framework. The collaboration with Ripple underscores this ambition, leveraging Ripple's blockchain expertise and the success of its flagship cryptocurrency, XRP. The Reserve Bank of New Zealand is actively embracing the transformative potential of digital currencies. Oh, hit my light again. As part of its ongoing efforts to modernize the country's financial infrastructure by exploring collaboration with Ripple, a trailblazer in the blockchain sector, the Reserve Bank seeks to usher in a new era of financial innovation. Ripple's extensive experience in bridging conventional banking with the cryptocurrency market positions it well for meaningful participation in such initiatives. The XRP ledger presents a host of unique advantages for expanding CBDC technology that we know. We know XRP is the one of the best. You know, all of the bank, coin, bank coins are the best of the best at what they do. They do. And I'm, I'm so happy that they're all they all sort of have their own position. Some some smart contract specialists there um, stellar as the base layer of of the new financial system, XRP, wholesale, interbank payments, things of that nature. I mean, um, it's coming together beautifully, in my opinion, just one step at a time. So this aligns with the Reserve Bank's goal of embracing cutting cutting edge. Technology while ensuring the security and stability of its financial systems, which is something that IBM should have taken into account. Did you, did you see that article about IBM and how they have that uh, they had that breach where lots of medical data was taken? Now, do you think that would happen if they would have continued to build on Stellar as well as Hedera? I mean, they're pretty secure. I mean, isn't Hedera, doesn't Hedera tout bank level security? Is that what they called it? Right? Because I know Zenfin XDC has military grade security. That's how they phrased it, I believe. Correct me if I'm wrong. But anyway, I just wanted to throw that out there. Yeah, yeah. I know some of you saw that IBM article. But anyway, so shaping the, the future of digital finance. This collaborative alliance underscores the growing global prominence of XRP. Ripple's proactive engagement with banks and financial institutions worldwide positions the XRP ledger to play a pivotal role in shaping the trajectory of the of digital finance, which will be look, digital finance is going to take over. We covered in that video yesterday and I tried, I'm trying to hold back in this video here today. We have a lot of other news we could cover about the fall of the legacy system. They're in big, big trouble. I mean, if you read a lot of the banking articles that came out today, holy smokes, it goes a little bit deeper than even what we covered yesterday in that video. If you haven't watched that video, check it out. All right. I think it's an eye opener was going on right now. And it just seems that their fall is accelerating. I, I, you know, I honestly didn't think that they could do much worse and they have been. Anyway, <laughs> let's continue on here. There's more. I'm skipping a lot. You want to read the rest of the article, Cryptopolitan.com. All right. I'm skipping a lot. This is this section is titled Trailblazing a Path Forward. The collaboration between Reserve Bank of New Zealand and Ripple presents a pivotal moment. The adoption of the XRP ledger for potential CBDCs exemplifies not only the ambition of the central bank to stay ahead in digital finance, but also highlights Ripple's expertise as a leading blockchain entity. Consequently, this partnership could set a precedent. Good article. Oh, yeah, I like how you put this together. Consequently, this partnership could set a precedent for other financial institutions, which tells you what, even with all this great activity happening, we're still at the beginning. Other financial institutions seeking innovative pathways to integrate digital currency securely and efficiently. It might reshape the discourse surrounding CBDCs and viability 
in a rapidly evolving financial ecosystem. Boom. Boom. Yeah. Yeah. Things continue to look good. In my humble opinion, hey, you could disagree with that. I'm perfectly fine with that. But Alphany thinks everything's going well, looking really good. All right. And this is proof. We're giving you the articles here. All right. So now, listen, <laughs> I was just talking about the pain. I'm just going to give you one article, one article about the legacy system. It's just unbelievable what's going on here. So now this is an article actually from CNBC.com and it's titled American Banks Face More Pain and a Huge Seismic Shift. This is how they're phrasing it. And listen, you know, things are bad when the mainstream media has to cover this because they typically don't. Typically, you have to go to like a lot of banker um, articles and magazines and websites, right? Like American Banker and things like the Financial Times. Um, so now it says here, the whirlwind weekend in late April, oh, they're going to go into all the, the different banks that went down. It says, after emerging the winning bid for a First Republic, a lender to rich coastal families that had $229 billion in assets. I don't know why that's relevant. JP Morgan Chase CEO Jamie Dimon delivered the soothing words craved by investors after weeks of stomach churning volatility. Quote, this part of the crisis is over. This part is over. It says, but even as the dust settles, here's the important part. Even as the dust settles from a string of government seizures of failed mid-sized banks, that th the forces that sparked the regional banking crisis in March are still at play. And that's what I want to make clear here. They're still at play. I know you all know this, but this is giving more confirmation of what is to come. It says rising interest rates will deepen losses on securities held by banks and motivate savers, savers. This is where people got to be careful. And this is where the banks are going to come into some trouble. As you we covered yesterday, deposit flight is skyrocketing. Anyway, it will motivate savers to pull cash from accounts, squeezing the main way these companies make money. We just talked about it. They're having a massive liquidity problem. Now, you can actually see that by what they're doing, how desperate the actions that they're taking is. What is the desperate action that they're taking that tells you they have low liquidity, that they're trying to drum up some liquidity within the system? They're issuing trillions in T-bills. Delicious T-bills, by the way. But they did it once and they're doing it again, which is why I've been telling people like, hey, I'm just keeping my eye on possible liquidity drain so you can know. If prices do drop, why that's happening? They're gonna if people are gonna go for a respectable locked-in yield, you know, uh, as they gobble up T bills, then that liquidity has to come from somewhere. It's gonna come from what they call risk assets, which is interesting. But we're talking about T bills, right? Which is interesting because now you see that bonds are no longer a safe haven. We covered that article yesterday as well. Um, but that liquidity has to come from somewhere, right? But it shows you that they don't have liquidity. That's why they're trying to drum it up so badly. There is a problem looming. Just my humble opinion, right? You make up your own mind about that. Not financial advice. It says here, losses on commercial real estate and other loans have just, just begun to register for banks. They're scrambling on that as well. Further shrinking their bottom lines. Regulators will turn their sights on mid-sized institutions after the collapse of Silicon Valley Bank exposed supervisory lapses. What do they mean by that? And this is what I was positing before, is that if you don't change leadership, if you don't change the minds, then how can you change the pathway that is walked? If this was their peak of solutions, their peak of how to operate and run companies, banks, then there is nothing else that leadership can do. And if you're not going to switch, then things are not going to change. Now, here's the problem. They didn't admonish. They didn't punish the banks like they should have. They bailed them out. Right. With the whole, that whole special fund that they have going that they're still they're continuing to bail banks out right now. They're, you can't do that for long. And um, I can't remember who it was. There was some official recently. Some of you may know you may have read these articles. There was some official recently that said in the future they're not going to be able to do a fund like that. I'm not sure when this is supposed to end. But if that's the case, then there will be no parachute next time. That means a lot of banks may collapse. But anyway, let's continue on here. It says what is coming will likely be the most significant shift in American banking landscape since the 2008 financial crisis. Many of the countries, many of the 4,672 lenders will be forced into the arms of stronger banks over the next few years, either by market forces or regulators. 
according to a dozen executives, advisors, and investment bankers who spoke with CNBC. So it's reputable. What do they mean by that? What does it mean they're going to be forced into the arms? They're talking about uh, uh, acquisitions, mergers and acquisitions, which means what? Your bank failed. Your bank collapsed. So it had to be acquired because there's a certain number of big banks that have a deal with the federal uh, with the federal government or federal bank, whatever you want to say that, where they must acquire the assets of fail of a certain uh, certain types of failing banks. We went over that before as well. So what they're trying to say here in a roundabout way that would be hard, very difficult for uh, people that are not familiar with the banking system, which I know you are at this particular time. What they're trying to say to keep those people out is, hey, there's a lot of banks that can collapse. That's why they gave you the number four thousand six hundred seventy two. They said many of them. So do with that information what you will. It's coming and they're going to be chased into the arms of the new financial system to say that this is not being done on purpose. I mean, I think that um, I would just have to respectfully disagree at this point. The Fed knows what it's doing. It knows it's crushing these smaller banks. Janet Yellen said there was going to have to be more uh, congealing of the banks. <laughs> so they know what they're doing. Let me read this last little quote. Then we'll move on to more crypto news. It says, quote, you're going to have a massive wave. There you go. Of M&A among smaller banks because they need to get bigger. M&A. Mergers and acquisitions. You think that the smaller banks really want to congeal with the bigger banks when they were here to become bigger banks all along? You think they want to get taken over? Absolutely not. This is why they were complaining before. Last year, they had a bevy of meetings. And what did they say? They said, hey, wait a minute. Are you trying to step on our toes? They were asking the big banks, especially more particularly the central banks. And the central banks said, what? They said, oh, no, no, with these CBDCs, with these digital currencies, no. We're going to let you run things. But while they're saying that, they're raising interest rates, which are crushing the small banks, not only eroding bonds, but the commercial real estate problem. Everything has been exacerbated by the big banks, which with the smaller banks, knowing that they have two options. One, they can either fail, get crushed and, you know, get, <laughs> give everything that they have to the bigger banks or they can adopt the new financial system. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Then Ripple, then a lot of Ripple executives, there were a few of them indicate that they were going after a, a lot of different banks. You know, this, this is what they're attempting to do. There's no guarantee they're going to get them. We know that. That's okay. But they indicated they were going after a lot of a lot of them. Now, listen, we've heard about a lot of banks being interested in XRP, right? XRPL based solutions. So let me go out on a limb and say they probably weren't talking about going after a lot of the big banks as they already have been in talks with them, it's going to be the medium and small size banks that were standoffish to the new financial system at first. I think that's logical, but we'll see. We will see. All right, let's move on here, everybody. I'm feeling good today. You having a good day today? I appreciate every single one of you out there, okay? All right, hope you're doing well. May goodness come to you. May you win at everything you are doing, no matter where you are. All right? So now, this article here is from the CryptoBasic.com and it's titled XRP repeats historical pattern after five years that resulted in a 15,400% XRP rally. This is just a feel good article. We've read a lot of material like this. I'm just waiting for everything to happen, but all information is good information helps us move a little bit further forward and, and get a little bit clearer of a picture of the possibilities. Without this information, we would not know. It says, despite the recent downtrend witnessed by XRP since July 13th peak, market watchers have continued to identify bullish patterns on multiple time frames. The latest is the reclamation of the 20-day and 50-day SMAs against Bitcoin, BTC. UK-based and analyst Crypto Insight first called attention to this bullish development in a recent post on Twitter. He highlighted its significance based on historical trends observed by XRP. It says here, XRP out, outperforms Bitcoin. Notably, the XRP slash BTC chart surged to a high of 0 0.0000297. There's a lot of zeros. <laughs> In July, marking its highest point since December 2022. All right, stop. I got to stop for a random thought. It just popped in my head. My apologies, everybody. Look, you want a good comedy, right? So I know it's old school. Hold on now. I'm a little bit old school myself. You want a good comedy to watch and tell me, people, have you ever seen this movie? This movie was funny. It was insane. It was bizarre. 
And I, I tell you what, <laughs> it's very relevant to today's time period. It came out, I think it was about 95 or 96, The Cable Guy with Jim Carrey. Now, this is not a movie that's spoken about a lot. That movie, it was, it was, it was, uh, Jim Carrey was in it. Jack Black was in it. And, uh, what's the other guy from Ferris Bueller? It was it Matthew Broderick? Is his name from Fer Ferris Bueller, Bueller's Day Out? Come on, I know. Have you watched Ferris Bueller's Day Out? Hey, there's no way you made it through the early 90s and 80s and you didn't see Ferris Bueller's Day Out. Yeah? Anyway, the cable guy. Was, <laughs> that was an insane movie. <laughs> you want some laughs, man. You, you remember the part when they fought at medi medieval times? And uh, Jim Carrey, just, he was unleashed in that movie. Um, I mean, everything about that movie was, was incredible. So if you want a funny movie, it's not advice, right? Check out the cable guy. Jim Carrey is hilarious in that one. Get what? Get back to the crypto. What? Hey, get back to that crypto news. All right. <laughs> somebody, I know somebody saying that. I love you all. So the mid the retracement XRP weakened against the first born crypto closing July at another crazy number. Says despite this drop, the recent upsurge saw XRP reclaim the 20 day SMA. Historical trends. Interestingly, Crypto Insight pointed out that XRP had not recaptured these two SMAs against Bitcoin since 2017. The analyst noted that the last time XRP achieved this feat, it resulted in its largest bull rally, with which it surged to its all time high value. All right, we're going to stop there. There's a lot more here. Once again, that's from the CryptoBasic.com. Everything is looking really, really good. I'll tell you what, and I said this a few months back. I was telling people, I said, be careful with Bitcoin. And I'll tell you why. It's because, and I think Bitcoin has a bright future. I, I really, I don't like how it's manipulated. I don't hold any Bitcoin, you know, but I do have a lot of people that I care about that do hold Bitcoin. So I try to keep up with it just a little bit. It's almost inevitable because the news is everywhere, but Bitcoin was doing well. And then it's almost like as soon as billionaires start saying, buy Bitcoin, buy Bitcoin. And it's just strange because those same billionaires, some of them were saying buy Bitcoin when their companies were selling Bitcoin. So I said to myself, wait a minute, it looks like they might try to pull a fast one here. Now you see Bitcoin has been consolidating for a little bit of a, a little while now. And I think I know why. Here's, an, here's another thing. I could, I, what really makes uh, that thought come to mind is I can't believe how much FUD has been coming out about Bitcoin lately. It's been mind blowing. So, you know, I'm just very cautious of why they're trying to FUD people out of Bitcoin. At this particular time, it looks like they may want to bring it down, although Bitcoin, for all intents and purposes, um, it should be going up to be true, true truthful. But uh, it looks like they may want to bring it down so they could buy a little bit more, just a little bit lower. So, I mean, there's been FUD everywhere, uh, but I personally feel like Bitcoin is, is going to be very bullish in the future. It's going gonna, it's gonna to pop off at some point. And when it does, it's a good thing because it brings up the rest of crypto with it. It really does. They use Bitcoin to control the rest of the market. Is is that's how they've been working things. So anyway, let's move on to another article here. All right. So this article is also from the CryptoBasic.com and is titled "Expert Asks Ripple CTO Why XRP Is Not on the Liquidity Hub." All right. It says the XRP community suggested diverse topics for which they needed more clarification. I guess there was some kind of question and answers thing going on says the suggestions included the intersection of Ripple and XRP use case, likewise the status of Ripple's on-demand liquidity product. Meanwhile, Bill Morgan, a prominent lawyer known for his pro-XRP stance, asked a critical question about Ripple's business operations. Let's scroll down here. Next section is titled, Why Ripple Yet to Add XRP and Liquidity Hub? It says Morgan asked Schwartz why the firm could not include XRP among the supported digital assets in its liquidity hub. The lawyer believes now more than ever XRP deletes deserves to be on the list given its clear regulatory status quote the reason ripple can't add xrp to the liquidity hub now is that the court the court found xrp itself is not a security i don't understand that let me read that again it says the reason ripple can't add xrp to the liquidity hub now is that the court found xrp itself not a security i, I gotta see the implications there okay i see I see what he's trying to convey. He says, well-known XRP influencer, Mr. Huber, guessed the reason was that Ripple Liquidity Hub 
was tailored to cater to the needs of institutions. That's what I thought. Okay, so that makes a, that makes some sense. It says, notably, Ripple's blog stated that the liquidity hub eases buying and selling digital assets for U.S., Australian, and Brazilian businesses. Nonetheless, the reason for the exclusion of XRP still begs an answer, as XRP is also a digital asset. It says, in the conversation thread, yeah, that's very, very complicated. And um, uh, hopefully they'll act soon. They're probably already in the act of getting clarity on that. So in the conversation thread, Morgan noted that Ripple's exclusion of XRP for businesses in the United States is understandable. Yeah. And that's why I was thinking, like, can't they just do it for everybody outside of the United States? However, he contended why Ripple is not offering XRP in liquidity hub for non-U.S. institutions like Australia and Brazil. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm saying. I'm not sure of their reasonings, but maybe in time, right? It says, quote, aren't the liquidity pools sourced in part, at least through XRP on exchanges, not direct sales, unquote, he, he inquired. Furthermore, the lawyer argued XRP holds a better regulatory status than coins such as Bitcoin. This article here is from BeingCrypto.com and it's titled Zimbabwe launches gold backed digital currency little by little. Take note of that, right? And how are they going to move that value across the world? It would be through the new financial system. Just my humble opinion. So you have them uh, uh, working on a gold back digital currency or they're saying that they're ready for launch in Zimbabwe. That's one. Um, you have discussions of an overall BRICS currency that's backed by gold. Discussions of it. We'll see what actually happens, what actually occurs. That's two. You had in Texas the idea. Remember that? You can look that up. You had in Texas the idea of having some sort of currency that's backed by gold. That's three. Then you have these uh, gold uh, gold bills that are in certain states. And you can buy these uh, these dollar looking things that are made of gold. They have gold on them, right? And they're backed by those states that are, they're just not used everywhere. Um, so you have that as well. So you have gold making this comeback. The future is very bright for gold. I'm going to say this also. The future is extremely bright for silver as well. As you see that there is a silver shortage. The, Demand is going through the roof for silver, um, which obviously is not going to be felt now. That'll be felt later. But the future for commodities and commodity backed digital currencies, man, any bank coin in the new financial system that can move that value across it, acting as a bridge currency or for liquidity, um, things are heating up, folks. It definitely are. My humble opinion, you could disagree with that, but the proof is here. So the Reserve Bank of Zimbabwe ramps up digital gold project. Here's another thing. Let me stop right there. Look at what's going on in Africa. I expect other countries to take similar actions and it doesn't have to be gold. It could be a different commodity. All right. But it looks like Africa right now is taking back power over their resources and they're going to maximize their ability to uh, um, to benefit from from those resources. So that's something to keep in mind. And who's deep in Africa? Stellar, Ripple, Cardano, Hedera, right? Algorand. Let me not forget Algorand. So first announced in April, the GBDT is intended to help stabilize the Zimbabwean dollar. It is also conceived as a way for Zimbabweans to hedge against inflation. Wise move. It says, which has remained persistently high for years. Presenting the monetary policy statement on Wednesday, August the 9th, RBZ Governor John Mangudia uh, revealed that as of July 21st, the bank had conducted 11 issuances of gbdt he noted that the bank received 590 applications to purchase tokens equivalent to 325.02 kg of gold it says from gold back tokens to cbdc's going forward mongudia stated that quote the bank is at an advanced stage in the preparations for the the eventual rolling out of the gbdt for transactional purposes in phase two of the project under the code or name ZIG, ZIG, which stands for Zimbabwe Gold. He added that the transactional form of Zimbabwe's digital gold tokens would complement U.S. dollars in domestic transactions by transitioning to GBDTs from a pure store of value to a currency used for everyday transactions. The RBZ is essentially proposing using the tokens as a CBDC. So now let's move on here. We're going to end off with this article here from Kitco.com, one of our favorite websites, and it's titled Silver Will Outperform Gold as Industrial Demand Picks Up. Told you. <laughs> it's coming. Time is coming. Precious metals prices will see headwinds in the medium term. I'm not worried about medium term. I'm a long-term holder. It says, 
but a recovery in industrial demand. We talked about this last year. Remember, I told you, listen, if you read the articles, you see all the catalysts, you see where everything was going, that there was going to be increased. They need silver for a lot of these electrical vehicles, platinum as well. Um, then also you need platinum for with the catalytic converters and stuff like that. But anyway, you need silver for the, uh, the what, what are those wind things, uh, the wind turbines for solar energy. You need silver for solar energy panels. You need silver for a lot of different, uh, what do they call it? The things that they need for cell phones. I mean, you need it in every possible way, but let's continue right here. And so, and so I think it was easy to see that this was going to occur. It says, but a recovery in industrial demand and a burgeoning solar sector should see gold silver ratio move closer to its historical average in coming years, according to Colin Hamilton, commodities analyst at BMO Capital Markets. Speaking in the latest Metal Matters podcast, Hamilton said that the near-term prospects for silver are being driven by, quote, macro asset allocator positioning, the Fed and the USD, unquote. He noted that, quote, silver has a pretty tumultuous time over the past month, unquote, with the price hitting highs of above $25 per ounce before pulling back, which makes sense in my humble opinion. Silver prices broke decisively below $23 per ounce on August the 8th. And the precious metal has been trading in the range of $22.90 and $22.63 since. It says, quote, a softer than expected CPI print in the U.S., that's questionable, combined with a relatively weak industrial production reading has served to temper expectations for future Fed rate hikes, unquote, he said. Quote, many market participants, including BMO Economics, are now of the belief that economic headwinds will outweigh tailwinds in the coming months, turning a skip in rate hikes at the September meeting into a more prolonged pause. Unquote. Hamilton noted recent comments from the Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell that strong economic data, while positive, could make reaching their 2% inflation target more challenging and could require further rate hikes. We also said that was going to happen. They can't take their foot off the gas. They can't, or it's going to go up. You saw that happen already. All right. And they're going to use that as justification to continue on. He said this has strengthened the U.S. dollar and created, quote, broad selling pressure, unquote, on precious metals. Quote, in our view, silver could show its usual torque on the downside move compared to gold just in the very near term, unquote, he said. Quote, because while broadly speaking, the global economy is is holding up relatively well, that's questionable in my opinion, and better than expectations. This is almost solely down to resiliency in the services economy, while the manufacturing side is clearly feeling the strain, unquote. Hamilton said this sustained weakness in manufacturing is weighing heavily on sil silver prices. Quote, this disproportionately impacts silver because industrial demand makes up over 50 percent of total silver demand. As compared to only 7% of gold, he believes that investors' risk appetite will increase through 2024. I can agree with that. As markets become convinced that the worst economic news is behind them, that's also very questionable, sir. It depends on what's going to happen globally with the banks. Now, globally, I will say this. I focus a lot on the commercial real estate aspect in just the U.S., but globally, there's a commercial real estate problem. Also, globally, there's a big problem with capital when it comes to shadow banks, non-banking financial institutions. There's a global liquidity crisis as well. Why do you think you see all this stuff going on with T-bills and bonds everywhere? And they're adjusting all of these different numbers. <laughs> so a lot of that will depend on the banking, the, the world's financial systems. And it looks like in 2024, I don't know if people will be able to necessarily say the worst is behind them. It depends on what happens because the worst could occur in 2024. So I'm just keeping my eye on that. It's a possibility. Sure. I hope things go great. But at the same time, I want to be prepared just in case things don't go great. We can make it through, survive and have as little loss as possible. That's how I look at that. And as the Fed's interest rate direction becomes more clear, quote, we might see a little bit more money flow out of the precious complex perhaps out of silver sooner than gold. I can see that. But eventually we see gold ultimately falling further. That will also rely on the banks in the financial situation. If some more banks go down, then you will have, and, and keep this in mind also, there's a lot of deposit flight. If there's going to be cont continue to be deposit flight, yes, there's a lot of people holding cash on the side. They're building up cash. I get it. But also a lot of people will, if there is a, a financial disaster, such as banks going down, they will retreat to precious metals. So it's just, it's a matter of just seeing the, the cat catalysts that are coming, really.
and then you'll know where things are going. So now I'm going to leave that off there. Once again, if you want to finish the rest of that article, it's from kitco.com, K-I-T-C-O.com. All right. Now that you have that information, what are you going to do with it? I know what I'm going to do with it. So until next time, let's get to the money.